Now, good afternoon, YouTube. This is my Tracer 4215BN charge controller. I have the MT50 remote display with it, but one of the things you can do with this controller is unplug the display, and what I've done to reach my PC, I've plugged in a regular Ethernet cable. I think it's a 50-foot cable and let me show you where I have that connected. Yeah, so what I did was I used the regular Ethernet cable to bring the signal in from the charge controller since it's on the other side of the house from my office and then I used one of these uh, tombstone connectors. So this is what you typically plug into a wall plate to bring an Ethernet cable say into a room. I got these from Monoprice. There's the part number. Yeah, so this is the RS-485 to USB cable that you get with the unit. Unfortunately, there is no documentation included. There's just the cable, and what you do is you plug it in, and then you come over here to your control panel. You have to go to Device Manager up here. What you want to do is come down here to your ports, and that device is called an XR21B1411. And what you need to do is double click on that and that brings up the device properties. Come over here to port. You need to set the bits per second to 115,200. 8 bit data, no parity, one stop bit, and no flow control. And then you need to check that box right there, RS-485. You need to get that enabled because that's the communications mode. Then let me show you where to get the software from. So you <clears throat> come over here to the epsolarpv.com page. I'll put a link in the video description. Yeah, I guess you have to come up here, tech support. There we go. That's where you get the full list of downloads. Here's all the user's manuals. But what you want is software. And... The one you want here is Monitor Software V1.2, and you go here, Download, so you now get this solar monitor, and what you want to do is you're going to add a station when it first comes up, because you don't have any station or controller, basically. What it'll do is it'll show you all the available COM ports. I'll just do an edit station here, so I... I basically created the device, so I uploaded the picture of the controller, it's on COM6, and you can put in your various parameters there. Most of them are set up here, so I gave my station name, the name of the controller, put in my information, my battery capacity and voltage, I put in my PV array, right now I've got a single 270 watt monocrystalline panel and then the batteries I set to sealed and then I got the controller here and so you just uh, create that and you can see down here it says start up and then if you want to monitor you start the monitor going I set it up to poll every 30 seconds so you get a data update twice a minute and there you go you've got all your parameters you have your array, current, voltage, and power, the battery, voltage, temperature, and you can see it starts plotting some real-time voltage down here. It has the energy generated that's going to the batteries, and then if you have a DC load, that would be over here. I don't have a DC load connected yet, and it shows you the charge state, so it's in boost charge. The load is off. I can turn the load on and off. There's my controller temperature, battery temperature, so it looks like everything is there. And then you can also do things like set up all your parameters, set your clock, set all of the device parameters, different control parameters, system configuration. I guess if you have multiple devices, you can then put them in this global monitor so it'll monitor all of the controllers you have. So that's kind of nice. So that's how you get the 
program running. It, this program does not seem to run on Windows XP. I imagine you need Windows 7 or Vista. This is Windows 8.1 and it's working just fine. On my Windows XP there are some unhandled exceptions in the .NET 4.0 support and it basically won't let you start up the program. You can start it up but it it just gets errors every time you try to do something. Yeah, so here's the RS-485 Wikipedia page, and like it mentions here, it can span relatively large distances up to 1,200 meters or 4,000 feet. And if we look here, you can see under cabling, uh, USB 2 provides a maximum cable length of 5 meters. So 5 meters is the longest you can extend the USB end of the cable, but the RS-485 end, you can extend that up to 1,200 meters. Anyway, that is the uh, monitoring software version 1.2 running on a Tracer 4215BN charge controller. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that running. If you have any questions, post that up in the comments section below. I'll put this in my solar power playlist. I'll put a link to that up here in the upper right corner. And if you found this video interesting, give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel, link in the lower right corner. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.